look what I did, right? I, I typed in, I typed in Izzy Strickland on Google on Google Images to get some images for the background, right? As I'm talking about the fight, look what comes up on Google Images. If you type in Izzy Strickland, look what happens. <laughs> There's a model called Izzy Strickland. Did you guys know that? I had no idea. There's an actual model called Izzy Strickland, I guess. And she's an absolute baddie, of course. But isn't that funny? There's a model called Izzy Strickland. <laughs> she pops up when you're trying to like, you know, she's got that, you know that she didn't know what she's got. She's got that racially ambiguous, you know, there's that meme that goes around that says by the year 2050, we're all going to look a certain way. We're all going to be like mixed. We're all going to basically look like a Kinder Bueno. She kind of looks like that, isn't it, right? She looks like a human Kinder Bueno. Um, but yeah, that's Izzy Strickland. So when you type in Izzy Strickland, you get that coming up on your flipping thing. Absolutely hilarious. Like in between all this madness, you get that. Um, anyway, let me try again. <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, <laughs> Israel Adesanya um, and then Sean Strickland. Right? Cool. Oh, I even spelled the fucking name wrong, didn't I? My bad. Israel that boom okay cool so um yeah this has to be my favorite picture that has to be my favorite one of the whole flipping fight or maybe even this not this is the one this that's the one. Oh, why is it doing that stop opening windows you piece of crap it's this picture i want right this one here there we go 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 okay cool copy image address and put this up on here boom is it gonna load Yes, there we go. Okay, cool. So, let's talk about it. Um, I'm coming at this as a casual, a filthy casual. I watch a lot of UFC cards. I watch a lot of UFC cards all the way through. I think there's a lot of people that just watch the main cards. I watch the prelims. I watch everything. But one thing I don't watch is I don't watch the... Um, I don't watch those flipping behind the ring things that they do on the UFC channel. I don't really give a fuck about those things to hype up the fight. I don't watch any of that stuff. I hardly watch their interviews. I mostly just watch previous fights and the actual fight card. The other content around them, don't really care for it to be completely honest. Unless it's a really interesting interview, I kind of stay away from it. Even post-match interviews, I don't really give a fuck about it too much. So I kind of always approach them really um, for face value, what I just see on the screen. And one thing I noticed about Sean Strickland and I think before the fight happened right um I was a little bit reminded before the fight even took place I was thinking a little bit about Drakus Duplessis versus Robert Whittaker I think a lot of us assumed Robert Whittaker would beat Drakus Duplessis because of how um because of how like unre you know lacking in refinement I guess Duplessis looks when he's in the octagon he doesn't exactly he doesn't exactly like um look very graceful, right? He's kind of got he's he kind of got knock knees. He's got like a weird posture, right? He's, he kind of looks a bit strange when he's in the ring. He doesn't look as slick as maybe as a Robert Whittaker, right? He's got all these amazing combos and just great striking and shit and bounces on his feet really well. It looks amazing. So I think when the fight happened, which when um Drake Super C beat Robert Whittaker, it immediately reminded me of Sean Strickland because I thought to myself, you know what? When it comes to UFC. Now, now at this level, we're at the UFC. We've we've got we've got now really high level guys. Like even Ido is a good example, who have good enough strike, who have good enough takedown defense, who have really high level striking. That even if you're a grappler, if you try to get close to take them down, you're gonna pay. So you're gonna have to hope you have a really good chin. So the the the, the days of like oh, if you're a really good striker but you don't have a good direct takedown defense, you're gonna die against somebody that's got good striking. It's gone. So I think everybody is kind of, in a weird way, operating on an equal playing field, if that makes any sense. I know this is strange to say, but I think this is what's happening. So when you have an off day, the person that you're against in the octagon, even if they have a limited skill set, if they perform to the highest of their limited skill set, they're going to beat you. That's the level we're at with the UFC now. I think so. I don't think we're in a level of UFC where if you've got good striking, but you've got not, not got good take and defensive face of grappler, you're immediately going to lose. I don't think that's the case. I think if you're a good wrestler now, you have to hope that you have a good chin because if you try and do the double leg, you try and take that person down, they might catch you as you try and take them down and then, you know, or, or completely like make you, you know, make your marbles go a bit crazy and then you've got the flipping chicken leg and then throughout the fight, you're going to be suffering and trying to come back. So I think with this particular fight, Sean Strickland was on it, Israel Adesanya wasn't, and he paid the price. But I also think there's a part of me watching tiny bits of the flipping pre-match stuff. 
I think Israel took Sean Strickland for granted like we all did. I think he came into it with a little bit too much arrogance. I think he believed he could legitimately go in there and it could be a bit of an exhibition fight. He could question mark, kick him. He could spin around. He could do all the flipping matrix shit and dodging punches. I think he thought he could go in there and really show off and have a good time and nothing would happen to him. He wouldn't get touched. I think that's what he thought. And because of that, the UFC gods, they punished him. I think because of that, the UFC gods punished him. He came in with too much copy. Yeah, big up, everyone. Teams. Appreciate you, brother. Favorite YouTube channel. Big up you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for the love, man. Thank you. Um, I think the UFC gods punished him. And the thing that's really sad about fighting in general, any combat sports, is that sometimes if you don't get the person out of the octagon or at the ring, you have to rely on the judges. And I'm thankful in this particular fight, especially with, um, um, what you call it, Sean Strickland's corner, his coach is fucking amazing. He had all the right things to say. He was never waffling, always gave him really clear instructions. He reminded him he needed to up the tempo. He needed to go for the kill. And I think him doing that and not allowing Sean Strickland to kind of point score to win is what eventually got him over it. Because Israel being the champion, there's no guarantee that if he would have went to points, even though we all saw the fight, like I think I would have scored the fight 4-1. I think Israel Desanya maybe took the second round. Maybe. Some people may even score it all the way flipping 5-0 to flipping Strickland. But I think Strickland won that fight four rounds to one. Israel maybe got the second round only, right? In another, in another world or another timeline, Sean Strickland might have took his foot off the gas, knew he's winning, and then tried to point score. But sometimes against a champion, if you do that, there's a danger that the judges will favour the champion and you won't win that fight. So I'm thankful that even though he went to decision that Sean Strickland was rewarded for absolutely dominating the fight, you know, leaving fucking Israel Desanya bloodied and bruised, knocking him down, which is fucking crazy to see, right? That right hand was just sweet. The way it took, it, it, it flipping spun Israel Desanya around so much that he gave him his back and then he started doing an amazing ground and pound. The ground and pound even, to be completely fair, that ground and pound, let's be honest, I think because of previous results, um, and because of previous early stoppages, I think the ref was a little bit cautious not to stop it. And of course, Israel made the sign of, of him thumbs up. But I think if Israel wasn't a champion, that fight would have got stopped a lot sooner. He's actually fortunate that he was allowed to continue that on because there was a lot of unanswered shots that he took at the side of the octagon. And um, it, Sean Strickland was going for it. Like he was laying into him as the side of the octagon. He pinned him, you know, what, like bang, bang, bang. Like he, there was a lot of unanswered shots that he took. Maybe he blocked a few of them with his palm. But from what I saw, there was a few unanswered shots that he flipped into. Big up, I'm Stinger Goo. Excuse me? There were 22. Izzy okay, has cool. been too active. That catches up to you. Of course, yeah. So it's, it's all a combination of things. So first of all, always give credit to the, to the person that won. Even though Israel is a favourite and he's still going to go down as one of the best ever, ever to do it in his weight class, we have to always give the attention to the person that won. I don't like this narrative going around nowadays where everyone's trying to make excuses for, for Israel and say he's tired, say the UFC are, you know, are, are doing too much with him, blah, blah, blah. He's too active. Okay, cool. That could be right. But in this moment... Let's give Sean Strickland all the praise because for his limited skill set, for how ordinary he looks against, um, who is it? Gerard fucking Cannonier, who isn't the greatest himself, right? He's he's obviously top 10, top five, but he's never going to be a champion. He looked really horrible against um, Gerard Cannonier. He lost against Alex Pereira. Um, all those fights, you kind of didn't see him personally as, you know, you didn't see him as championship level of an opponent. But the fact that he learned from the Alex Pereira fight and was able to apply that into this fight is amazing. And just again, like I said, limited skill set, but he used it to his top potential. And he went into that ring, or went to Octagon, sorry, and completely limited um, Israel Desanya's ability to dictate that fight. He had Israel backing up to the Octagon the entire time. He didn't allow Israel to flip in, chop at his calves and take away his flipping movement. Um, he didn't really sustain any big hits or punches, no big looping right hands. He didn't buy into the possum stuff. Um, he jabbed his fucking face off, right? It was a complete and utter domination. And it's really scary because... Sean Strickland looks like he's got cardio for days. Like I've never, I've never actually seen that before from him. Like his ability to just keep on keeping. He didn't look tired one bit. And there was bits in the round, which I think is, it's all like mind play, which is fucking, I love the bits of mind play. In between the rounds, if you saw it, he refused to sit down. And then he would purposely get his coaches, even though they're saying good things to him, he's like, tell him to fuck off. And he'd be like glaring at fucking Israel. 
he would be glaring at him, just standing there, waiting for, like glaring at him. And Israel had his hand on the octagon. He's confused. He's talking to his coach like, I can't get him. Like he's obviously looking bewildered. And Sean's giving him the glare, like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. All of that was all of that was mental that he did to him. Really got into his head, I think, because obviously Israel is not a dumb guy. He could tell the fight wasn't going for him. And then he just saw flipping Sean Strickland glaring at him, you know, pacing from side to side, waiting to get the fight started. Like, honestly, it was incredible to see. And like I said before, the UFC has got to a level where nowadays, if you are the elite striker guy and you're facing a grappling guy, they can't just come and try and fucking double leg you. It's not going to work. You have to be able to do the you have to be able to do the maximum you have to do and hope the person has an off day or catch them when they make a mistake but the days are just oh this guy's a striker i'm just gonna do this no it doesn't work that day and if you have an off day now in the top levels of the ufc you're gonna get punished you are utterly utterly gonna get punished and it's really amazing to see that also even though it went to the judges sean Strickland was able to win now heading back to the flipping heading back to the israel thing it was a real shock let's not deny Israel losing was a complete shock. I, I didn't see that happening. I think maybe in the back of my mind, I thought, okay, Israel might lose because of a decision. But I never, ever thought he would lose because he got absolutely bullied the entire fight. Like, again, if he wasn't champion, it probably would have got stopped when he got knocked down because there's a lot of unanswered shots. But there is a question to be had about how flat he looked. Like, let's, not, let's call a spade a spade. He didn't look like he was... Like, he kind of looked like... um. He reminded me a little bit of Tyron Woodley towards the end. I'm not too sure. I hope that's not happening. But you know, remember Tyron Woodley kind of looked like he lost that ability to like turn it on, to go for broke. Like he just, he always kind of looked very hesitant. I don't know if that's like a punches thing, if it's been, been rattled too much, but Israel looked really flat. He didn't ever look like he was ever going to turn it on apart from the second round, which he won. He won the second round and I thought from then on, okay, he's going to assert dominance because the second round he won was pretty good. He got knocked down in the first then he wins the second round. That's actually a championship mentality, right? The ability to kind of bounce back and reassert your dominance. And I thought from then he was going to like, you know, essentially take um, Sean Strickland apart. It never happened. So he, he looked a little bit flat. He looks very fatigued. I think so. He got a, he got a lot. He got, he got tired really quickly. I think by the third round, he kind of looked like he was uh, breathing out of his ass. His mouth was open a few times. That obviously didn't look good. And his timing was off for the most part. He was un unable to, you know, he didn't really do much damage on Sean Strickland's calves. Um, all these kicks weren't really landing as great. His punches were missing here and there. Like he just looked like his timing was off. It wasn't really there. And again, a lot of that has to do with Sean Strickland's ability to also be really good with distance and space. He was able to always catch him with the flipping um, jabs, pull away whenever he's going to counter. He was able to flip and move his legs. Even He didn't even just check kicks, which, is, which fucking hurts. I've done it before, right? Checking kicks fucking hurts, right? He didn't even check kicks. He just kind of, you know, scooting back a little bit of his knee and he was able to miss the flipping um, calf kicks all the time. And, you know, how he left the octagon, his comments afterwards. There's a part of me that thinks, Adesanya's maybe just before that level of Usman and before that level of Woodley, where maybe he's just because I think I remember who who I remember hearing him say that someone said it about being champion is really exhausting, like the media obligations, knowing that all of these hungry lions are behind you, trying to flip and take your belt, take your head off from your shoulders. The fact that if you're a champion, you know everyone's coming after you, so you can't really have an off there. You have to train like you are a contender all the time. It gets a bit tiring. And Izzy's been fighting for a long time, right? Even before he got into the UFC. So maybe there's a part of him that's just like, you know what? He might be happy that he lost the belt, you know? It's weird to say this, but he didn't look, you know, he didn't have the... He didn't have the snarl that he had after Alex Pereira because Alex Pereira won was obviously a personal fight because of how many times he's beaten him um, in obviously kickboxing. So he took that person and he came back and got that and got that W. But he didn't look as upset as I thought he would looked. You know, he didn't look that way. He kind of looked a little bit relieved, if that makes sense. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but he looks a little bit relieved. Okay, fucking, I can have a bit of a break now. I can kind of go back to just being a regular UFC fighter on a roster. So that might be a case. So. Is there is there is there a possibility he might retire? Is there? I don't know. It sounds wild, but he sounded really. He didn't sound like he was that bothered, really. To be fair, maybe it was a kidology, but I'm not too sure. Um, again, very very enjoyable fight. Very very enjoyable, and in my opinion, that's what makes the UFC such a great sport. In one sense, I hate the fact that Dana White doesn't pay these guys well um and that even the champions you know they don't get paid enough in my personal opinion so they basically have to fight more often than any other combat sports organization because that's the only way they make money um cool 
But one of the things that it does do, it does allow you to see the best of the best fighting more often than not. And you get to see them doing it at their quote unquote peaks. So there's no like, you know, there's no Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather debate of like, oh, it happened too late, it should have happened before. No, no, no. You get to see them fight when they should fight. But also what I love is that every single year the sport's evolving. It's evolving now to the point where the flipping top level guys, doesn't matter if you're a grappler, if you're a striker, you have to be on your A game when you get step into octagon because there's no guarantee because you're a black belt in jujitsu, you're going to choke this person out. No, you've got to fucking get them down first. You've got to get, you've got to take their back first. And before doing all that, you're going to leave yourself open to a submission, to a flipping ground and pound, to whatever. I love all of that. That stuff is going now. It's really, really evolving. And I also like the fact that these guys are learning so quickly. Like Sean Strickland kind of looked limited. He goes to train with Alex Pereira, does some other training too. And then he comes back and looks like a completely different fighter. I love the fact that they're all like, you know, they're, they're all learning so fast. It just shows the flipping IQ these guys have when they step into that octagon. It's just beautiful to watch. I'm really not going to lie. So I really did enjoy that. Um, I really also did enjoy Dana White's face. He wasn't happy that Sean Strickland won. Um, he's obviously not going to be good for business. He's way too outspoken, way too kooky. Uh, so they're definitely going to throw him to the wolves. If he doesn't face Israel straight away for a fucking rematch, it'll be Alex Pereira. It'll be somebody else. Like it'll be a fucking savage, right? He's not going to let him rest on that fucking, um, he's not going to let him rest with that belt for a long time. I get the feeling that he would, he would like somebody else to be um a champion of that division because um, you know it's gonna be less controversial um but yeah um all of that i enjoyed all really good um and yeah just an enjoyable fight very shocking end result but again all credit goes back to sean strickland for being a fucking immense immense fighter and for using what he has to absolutely dominate that fight because he was making like he was making me tired watching him i was like fuck you know give israel some time he just kept backing him up to the cage backing him up to the cage pa, pa, jab jab right cross backing him up to the cage like it's just like fuck he gave him no space and he didn't look tired his face was fucking look at his face nothing wrong with him whatsoever like absolute animal man at that end of the round he was shouting at him it, it almost felt primal right like at the end come on come on then come on then i was like beating my chest you know what i mean even though i should be i should be fucking you know cheering on my african my african brother i was cheering for fucking sean by the end because he was like come on you can see it man i was like ah oh. it just it gives me goosebumps when i'm thinking about it it's just such a fun fight man such a good card i really did fucking enjoy it so big up um sean strickland shout out to you um hope you're having a good time also funny to find out he's got a girlfriend i didn't know he had a girlfriend did you guys know he had a girlfriend <laughs> he had he hit her pretty well didn't he <laughs> um what, what's eddie saying what if izzy and alex fight again at 205 for the work vacant belt yeah that, that could be true i don't think izzy would want that though after going through that with fucking sean strickland going to fight alex Pereira again is not of something that i would want to do if i was him to be fair um it's a very design zinger doing mma reviews now what is this food truck diaries <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you guys are cunts i swear to god i can't do anything around here i can't live my life man you guys are fucking haters man you're haters you guys are haters b cheeto cheeto fingers haters <laughs> you guys don't let me live what is this <laughs> food truck diaries it's so rude man you don't like come on bro give me a chance you know give me a fucking chance <laughs> so dismissive of my fucking passion for fucking combat sports eh? i love this game man i love this game why don't why don't you guys support my passion huh why are you guys being so mean to me Oh God! Anyway, uh, <laughs> what, what is this? Food truck diaries is so rude. Pick up Austin Casey, brother. You What's really up? have to watch Luke Thomas breakdown of the fight. Oh it yeah, is yeah. really good. Oh yeah, cool, cool, cool. I'll play that. I'll play that as well. I'll play that as well. Big up Luke Thomas. Big up Austin Casey, brother. Thank you for the five dollars um, donation, brother. Appreciate you. Um, but yeah, um, enjoyable fight. I loved everything about it. Really, 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 really good time. So I can't, you know, complain about that. I really, really can't. 